at the byte configuration step, you can open the byte using the incisal pin and adjust the incisal table angulation to create customized anterior guidance for the splint. Make sure that the jaws are correctly positioned in the articulator by using the control points. To help you do this, there are a few useful tools. The teeth outlines on the default plane can help you adjust position by aligning the model with the outlines. The tilt and height position of the jaws can be adjusted by using the control spheres. By left clicking on either jaw, you can activate it and change its position individually. Note that changing the jaw relations should be done extremely carefully. In this case, we will adjust the virtual articulator settings to help produce the canine guidance ramps for the splint. First, enable Guide by Incisal Table. In the Articulator Settings tab, you may adjust the incisal table angulation to create a customized incisal guidance for the articulation. In the example case, we will use 34 degrees of angulation for all movements. To ensure sufficient interocclusal clearance for the Michigan type splint, we will use the opening of incisal pin value to increase the distance between the jaws. In this example, an opening of 9.5 mm results in 1.3 mm of interocclusal clearance in static occlusion. Another way to achieve the same result is to use the Open to Splint Thickness tool to automatically open the bite in a certain minimum thickness. The software will make sure that the given value in millimeters is the minimum one in static occlusion. Note that the opening in millimeters occurs in the posterior area. After this, you'll have to adjust the incisal pin back into contact with the table should you want to use the incisal pin guidance for the virtual articulator. When satisfied, use the Lock Jaw Position tool to lock the jaws in position. In many cases, a value between 1 to 2 mm is sufficient to ensure the minimum thickness of the splint is met in dynamic articulation. Clicking the 2D cross-section tool will allow you to check if interocclusal clearance is sufficient for the splint. To do this, look at the model from the top and draw a line so that you can see both sides of the dentition in the cross-section panel. Use the control points to move or rotate the plane if needed. Now, find the narrowest point of the cross section and take a measurement to check it. Then run articulation. As the jaws are moving, it may turn out that the bite may not be opened enough to accommodate for the minimum thickness required. When satisfied, move on further. 